Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to check out the inner workings of the task system in Battle Royale Tycoon. We're going to add support for queuing tasks. Let's begin. Alright, so here's our scene so far. We have a worker in here, and we can spawn three different task types. We can spawn a move to position task, which will move the worker to a position, so click. Yep, there he goes, he moves and he waits. All right, we can spawn a victory task, which will make him play simple animation. So click and yep, playing the animation stops, now requesting. And I can spawn a shell sprite and a shell cleanup task, which will make the worker go to the sprite position, play an animation and clean up that sprite. So click, he goes, he plays the animation and poof, the sprite gets destroyed. Okay, great. Now let's say I want to add a task to the system, but I only want it to be executed after a certain condition. That is where queue tasks come in. We're going to create a shell cleanup task, but only execute it after some time. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist and follow. So let's begin by going to the task system. And up here, let's make a new class, a public class, and let's name it queued task. Now in the constructor, so public queued task, we're going to receive a function and that function will contain the task validation code. So in here, we're going to receive a func. The func type is a delegate very much like the action down here with the only difference being an action returns void and a func returns something. So in this case, we want to return a task and we're going to call this, let's say, try get task func and let's store this internally all right so the queue task object receives a function which returns a task essentially this function will return a valid task only when that task can actually be executed when it cannot it will return null so let's make a public function that will call this internal func so in here let's make a public task that's going to be the return type and let's name it try the queue task and in here all we're going to do is return the actual try get task func and try to return it so if it can be executed it will return a proper task if not it will return null so this entire object is representing a queued task he receives a function which will contain the validation code and that function will return the final task when it can be completed. If it cannot be completed, it will return null and the task will remain queued. So now onto the task system itself. First, we need to store a list for our queued task. So let's make a private list of queued task and we're going to name it queued task list. So this list will essentially have any queued task must be validated before being dequeued. Let's initialize it in the constructor. Task list equals new. Yep, that. And now we need some way to dequeue our tasks. So for that, I'm going to use the function periodic, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities. So using CodeMonkey.utils. As always, you can grab the utilities for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And using the utils contains this class, the function periodic. Now the function periodic simply executes an action every certain amount of time. So it is perfect for what we want to create in here. So we want to have a function that will be executed and that function, let's call it DQ tasks. And we're going to execute it every 200 milliseconds. All right. So that's what this object is doing. It is executing this function every 200 milliseconds. So let's go down here and make that function. So a private void dq the tasks. This function will be called every 200 milliseconds. And the reason we are doing this every 200 milliseconds is essentially to, so we don't waste performance. If a task cannot be executed in this frame, then chances are it won't be executable in the very next frame either. So there's no point in asking every single frame. Every 200 milliseconds is fast enough to validate our queue tasks. Obviously, this is very dependent on what kind of game you are making. So on the DQ tasks function in here, let's cycle through the Q task list. So for int, let's grab the queued task, queued task equals the list i, all right. 
And now in here, we are going to grab the task from the queued task dot try to the queue that task. So now if the task that is returned is different from null, then that means the task has been dequeued. So let's add it to normal list. So we do add task of this task. And once this has been dequeued, let's remove it from the list. So go into the task list and remove the task at position i and then lower the i since afterward it's going to be increased. All right, so if the task is null, so return task is null, keep it queued. All right, so this function goes through all of the queued tasks and grabs the ones that can be executed and adds them to the normal list. So in here, let's just do a CM debug just so we can do a text pop-up and say task dequeued. All right, good. So finally, we also need a function to add a task to the queue. So let's make that up here, make a public void in queue task. And in here, let's first of all, very simply receive a queued task object. And we're going to simply add it to the queued task list. And as a helper function, let's make another one a function that receives, first of all, call it queue task. And in here, we're going to receive essentially what the queue task receives. So a func that returns a task, try get task func. And here we're going to automatically create a queue task. All right, so this is just a helper function. So we can use this instead of having to create a queue task outside. All right, so let's go through the logic so we understand how the queue task is set up. So elsewhere in our code, we're going to call task when we need to execute a task that has some condition that must be met before executing. The func argument will contain the function that will be responsible for testing that condition and creating the final task. That is why the func returns a task object. So the test system will create a task using that function now the object simply stores it and exposes a function to execute the validation func. And if successful, it returns a task. If not, it returns null. And down here we have a function periodic, which is triggering this function every 200 milliseconds. In here, we go through all of the queue tasks. We grab them, we try to dequeue them, and the result from this will either be the final task or null. If it is null, then the return task is null, so keep it in the queue. If it is not null, then the task has been dequeued and the task object in here can be executed. So we add it to the normal list and remove it from the queued task. So that's the whole logic for queued tasks in the task system. So now that we made all that code, let's test it out. So let's go into the game handler. And down here on left mouse click, we are spawning the floor shells. And down here, we are automatically creating the task. So instead of simply adding the task, we are going to enqueue it to make sure that the cleanup only happens after five seconds. So instead of using task system dot add task, what we want to do is do a task system dot enqueue task. Now enqueue task, as you can see, we're going to use this one, which takes a func as an argument. So that func, let's write it in here. Now, before we return this task in here, so let's copy it down here. Before we return this task, we want to see if five seconds have passed. So let's do up here a float for the clean of time. And that time will be time dot time plus five F. So five seconds from when this sprite has been spawned. And in here, we're simply going to test if time dot time if it is bigger than the cleanup time, then this can be cleaned up. So we're going to return the same task as before, which is down here. However, if the time has not passed, then we're going to return null. And as you remember from how we set it up, if we return null, then 200 milliseconds later, this function will be triggered again and again and again until it finally returns the task, which happens after five seconds. All right, so let's see if all of that code is working correctly. All right, so here's the worker. And now when I click, it should immediately spawn the sprite, but the worker should remain requesting a task until after five seconds, and then he will finally grab the task. So let's see if that happens. So click, 
Now he's waiting, he's still requesting because the task is invalid. And now all of a sudden, yep, the task has been dequeued. It is now valid. The worker is executing, executes, and he waits. Yep, great, exactly. We have successfully added a validation condition to our tasks before they can be executed. So I can spawn multiple, and as you can see, he stays waiting for tasks since these tasks are have not been validated yet. And now all of a sudden, all of them are being dequeued, and now he's executing them one by one. So there you have it. Our task system now supports queuing tasks. That means we can add a task to the system even if it can't be executed at this very moment. In the next video, we're going to use the queue task in a real world scenario by grabbing weapons and taking them to weapon slots, but only if they are empty. Exactly the same logic is being used in Battle Royale Tycoon. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the scene page, add it to your wishlist and follow. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.